Hello and welcome back to my channel English is easy. I hope that all of you are doing very good and for today what I'm going to show you is how to identify a clause or a phrase and what is a clause and a phrase is in our English language. Therefore be careful and concentrate while I am going to show you that how to solve questions related to clause and phrase. So I hope you will understand it and it will make you make yourself more adaptable to this thing. First of all, we have to know what is a clause and a phrase. So let's begin. So if you make a column, then it will be very easy to understand that what is a clause and a phrase. So now let's start. Clause is something which a group of words which gives you a meaning and phrase also gives you a meaning a sense but not a complete sense but whereas a clause will always give you a complete sense our clause can have subject and a verb because it is very important that whenever you are going to solve identify a clause in a sentence you have to be very careful and you have to watch that whether that sentence has a subject and a verb because a clause will always gives you a verb and a subject whereas on the other hand a phrase will never give you both these things either one of them is missing or sometimes maybe both of them are missing so this is the stark difference between a clause and a phrase and a single clause can be in a sentence but a single phrase cannot make a sentence on the other hand without a clause a sentence cannot give its proper meaning whereas a clause though it adds some meaning to the sentence but it alone cannot make a sentence so these are the differentiation which you have to know. So what I have told you, first of all in the very beginning that both of them are a group of words. Okay, but they had some differences. So what are the differences? That we have to know. What is that? A clause is a group of words and it has a subject and a verb. That means a clause will have a subject and a verb. On the other hand, a phrase will have neither of the two or one will be missing. That means it will either have a subject or a object or a verb. So this is the thing. It may not contain these things or it may contain only one of them either of them but in a clause you will always have a subject and a verb so this is the very first thing which you have to remember because if you forget these things you cannot make out which one is what so be careful because number one what shows that a clause must have a subject and a verb whereas in a phrase it will have neither of the two or it may be missing one of them either the subject or the verb is missing so this is the most important point let's come to the second point what it shows that a sentence can exist as a single clause that means in a sentence a single clause can make a sentence or can give you a complete sense. I hit the ball. That means it is giving you a complete sentence. I will woke up. That 
means I will arise from my sleep. She will sing. That means it's giving a complete sense. You can find that thing. You can understand what the exact thing is being done. But wherever you go, that means it is not giving you a complete sense. So therefore, when you are not getting the complete sense, that is a phrase. And whenever you are getting a complete sense, that is a clause. So a sentence can exist as a single clause. This is the thing. But a single phrase can't make a sentence. It cannot build up a sentence. I will show you the building blocks of a sentence by which you can understand it more easily. On the second point, what is it showing? Removing clause may affect the understanding of sentence if you remove the clause. Suppose in a sentence, if we remove a clause, then the sentence will never give a complete sense. But in this third case, a phrase add up meaning to a sentence, but they can't create a sentence. A phrase, it may give you, a, it may add a sense to the sentence, but not, but not, it can can't create a sentence. So these are the differentiation. That means a clause must have a subject and a verb, whereas in a phrase, you will, either of them will be missing or both may be missing. Second, a, clause, a sentence can exist as a clause, single clause, but whereas in a phrase, a single phrase cannot make any kind of sentence. Third, what it is showing, removing clause may affect the understanding of sentence because the sentence will be at loss. It will never give you a complete meaning. But whereas in a phrase, they will add something to the sentence, some more meaning to the sentence, but not, it cannot create a complete sentence. So these are the things which you have to remember. Now with an example, I will show you how to underline or how to point out which one is clause and which one is a phrase. So let's, well, in this sentence, what I can see, wherever you go, I will follow. That means sometimes whenever you say to your parents that wherever you are going, I will always follow you. Because this is the thing which we exist between our parents and ourselves and our loved ones. So in this sentence, how you will determine or how you will point out which one is phrase and which one is a clause. So look at this sentence very carefully, wherever you go. So this part of the sentence is adding something, but it is not giving you a complete sense when if, if, if you demarcate the sentence and write it separately, it won't give you a meaning. But on the other hand, this one, I will follow. This is giving you at least a complete meaning. Subject is here. So this one is a phrase. And this one is a clause. So how I have determined this thing? Because suppose this is not giving you It is not giving a complete sense, whereas this part of the sentence is giving you a complete meaning. Why? Because remember those points which I have told you. As you can see, I, what it is, it is a subject. And follow, what it is, it is the verb. So what I have told you, whenever you are getting these two things, this number one and the number two, then it is creating a complete meaning. So here I is representing the subject and follow is representing verb. So these are the things which will help you to understand what it is. Therefore, this is part of the sentence. You may say that the you also is a subject, but go is also a verb. But obviously, they are not acting as a verb, neither they are acting as a subject, so they are not giving you a complete meaning.
And whereas in this part of the sentence, after the punctuation, it is showing you that it has a perfect who is following I and what I am doing, it is following. So this gives you a complete meaning. Therefore, it is a clause and this part of the sentence is a phrase. So by this way, you have to demarcate the sentence. Now, we have to understand it easily by the building blocks of a sentence. Suppose in a clause will always contain a phrase, but a sent and a sentence will always contain a clause. You have to remember that a clause will always contain a phrase and a sentence will always contain a clause, but not a phrase. That means these are the things, most important things. Suppose if, uh, if I write you like this, now what we have to know that these two are very important points. A clause contains a phrase and a sentence contains a clause. Understand this thing. A clause will always have a phrase. It will have. But a sentence will always have a clause. These are the most important points. You have to remember these things. Because this is the fact. Suppose if I write in a different way like phrase then what it comes clause and ultimately a sentence. So this is the thing you have to remember these things. For example a, a big clock. A big clock. Therefore, it is not giving you a sense. Just a clock. Nothing else. Then, if I write like this after that, a big clock chimed. So, a big clock chimed. That means a function is being done. A function is being done by the subject and this is the verb. But still we need to add something more. And what it is? Suppose now a big clock chimed when the and struck midnight. Now this is a complete sentence when it is being added with some other meaning. So what it shows a big clock chimed when the hand struck midnight. So at the time of midnight the clock chimed. That means it is it gives some sound which shows that it is the hour of the, that hour particular hour particular time so what you have to remember by this thing is that a phrase is a group of words and that can't give stand alone neither it can create a sentence but it is a very important part of the clause of the overall sentence and it acts it you can say that it acts as a subject to the clause but not a, not a thing which will help you to make the sentence. So it can never make a sentence, but it is an important part for the clause. You can say that it can act as a subject to the clause, but not a clause. And it is only giving a sense to the clause, but it cannot make you understand what the sentence wants to say. It only gives you a meaning. It adds you a meaning to the clause or to the sentence, but can't create a sentence. So what is the most important thing is that our clause, which has both the subject and the verb, that means the action of the subject and it is giving you a proper meaning. So these are the things. I will give you some more examples so that you can understand these things very easily. 
Now look into these two sentences. What it is saying? Faced with so many problems, I decided to get professional help. Whenever we face so many problems and we cannot solve it by our, by our own, then we need the professional help. Whenever we cannot solve the problems of mathematics or English or something else, we need some professional help. That means we need our teachers and tutors so that they can help us in our studies. And in any of these things, we always need some professional help when we face problems. If you do not face problems, we will never in need of any kind of professional help. So in this sentence, what you can see, where is our subject, what the, what the subject is doing and what meaning we are getting. So faced with so many problems, that means this is giving some sense to the sentence, but that is not performing or creating a sentence. Neither it is performing as a sentence, neither it is creating a sentence, but it is true that it's giving a meaning. I decided to get professional help. If you question the sentence, who? If you question the sentence by who is getting help, what answer you are getting? I. That means it is our subject. Who is getting the help? I. So I will be our subject. And what I am doing? What? If you question it like this, with what, what this subject is doing, getting professional help. That means I has decided, I have decided to get some professional help. So what you are getting, you are getting the subject and the verb by questioning the sentence. You have to question the sentence by these things. When you are questioning the sentence, who is doing what? Then when you are getting the answer, that means that sentence has both the verb and the subject. But in this sentence, can you question the sentence by those things how which I have told you? No. If you question the sentence, you are not going to get any answer. But it is not giving you any answer. That's why this part of sentence is phrase. And as you can know, we are getting our complete sense from this part of the sentence after the punctuation. So it will be our clause. So you have to understand the things like this. So this part of the sentence, which is only giving us adding a meaning to the sentence but not creating a sentence because it needs the help of this thing but this thing does not need the help of it. So whenever this kind of sentence come you have to question the sentence when you are getting the answer by questioning the sentence about the subject and the action of the subject that will be our clause and when you are not when you are questioning the sentence but you are not getting that those things then it will be our Phrase. So this part of the sentence from faced with so many problems is our phrase and I decided to get professional help that will be our clause. Then come to the next sentence. She arrived to work on time in spite of leaving home so late. So in this sentence, if you question the sentence, who arrived on time? What you are getting the answer? She. So therefore it will be our subject. Very good. Now, what she has done? What the action being done by her? She arrived on, on to the work on time. That means this part shows the action of the subject. Therefore, this portion, this complete portion is giving you a complete sense. That means the subject has done something or the subject is doing something. So therefore, this portion is a clause. But the next part of the sentence, what it shows, in spite leaving home so late, it is adding something to the sentence. But as you can see, it cannot stand alone. If you write this sentence, 
by by cutting it down from the front part of the sentence in spite of leaving home so late that will not give you a meaning but whereas when it sits on this sentence it is adding something to it that means even if that person left home so late but still she has arrived on time so what this part of the sentence is called phrase so you have to understand clause and phrase by this way you have to identify these things like this way in the most easiest thing what i can say that a clause will always have a verb and a subject it will always give you a meaning and a single clause can stand alone a sentence cannot be created without having a clause but on the other hand a phrase only add some meaning to the clause and some meaning to the sentence but it can never sit alone or it can never create a sentence if you remove a clause from the sentence the sentence will be damaged it will not have any kind of meaning so you cannot remove a clause but on the other hand a phrase only add up something to the sentence but it will never make a sentence so you have to be very careful you have to remember these things these are the way you can take a screenshot or you can write these things down and if you have to question the sentence by the interrogative words or wh words and when you are getting the answer that portion of the sentence will be our clause and while questioning the next part of the sentence if you are not getting any answer like this then it is a phrase go through these things you will learn it bit by bit everything because i have explain i have ex give the explanation in a detailed way so that you can understand it well i hope you have understood this thing and i so i will like to request you so please like and share my video and subscribe my channel so that you can get updates like this more and i will always be happy to bring more videos on this kind of topics so that it will help you in your education and in your future so please like and subscribe my channel and all the best to all of you